Welcome to Muzuzu, the northern part of Malawi. But I've always been telling you guys, we are not leaving any story behind. If you are in the north, the south, east or west of Africa, we are going to find you and we are going to tell your story. But it's a matter of time. It's a matter of you supporting the journey. It's a matter of you encouraging us by liking these videos, sharing these videos, subscribing. The main goal of this whole channel is to inspire Africans to be great wherever they find themselves. The story I'm going to tell today is one of my favorite stories. I've read about this lady. I got to know her existence the day I interviewed Sala Torres from Uganda. And people started tagging me in her story, telling me that, Maya, this is one story that you need to tell. And when I came to Malawi, I had to make it happen. But when I checked her location, I'm like, oh my goodness. So here we are. Come along with us. Let's go meet Tusayue. I hope I mentioned the name right. My name is Tusayue Mongkondia, but most people call me Tusayue Yana. I'm 24 years old and I'm a founder of an organization that is called You Are Not Alone, Yana. So I am a foster mom to 100 kids, but also we learn preschools that helps more than 200 kids. And mostly is like a charity work that provide education empowerment to young mothers and also shelter and safety to children who have been abused sexually and any physical abuse. How do you feel anytime you come in here seeing happy faces in the room? I honestly feel, feel good because I've taken some of these kids when they were young so seeing them growing up I can't wait to see them like to see the future of them being president or anything that they choose to be like it will be a great feeling and right now it's even much better like it's a great feeling to see them grow and expand so what motivates me to do all this is because my mother abandoned me when I was a baby when I was so young and she never wanted me from that day so I grew up with people that have loved me and some haven't loved me. So I've always felt alone. That's why I call my organization, You Are Not Alone. When you were growing up, you had no one to take care of you. Yeah. But you're taking care of them. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel happy. That's why I make sure that they, uh, their home should look, I make sure that they look clean. Because I, I take care of them more of like my own kids. I don't want to do it like, oh, I'm just taking care of orphans, but I want, I, I make sure that they feel that they have a mother and they have someone who wants them to, who wants the best for them. Yeah. What makes me happy is when I see the kids having a place to sleep and when I see my son having a family because that's what I've always wanted for myself, to have a family of, on my own, of my own. So him having a family f through different people from different places, that makes me so happy. What keeps me going is him, because I just want to make it up for him and other children who, who needs me, honestly. You know, we have created family. It's not just like people that I've met, but we have created family. You see, we have a mom, we have a dad, you know, where everybody can go and say, Mom, I need this, Dad, hey, I need this. You're always troubling me. Yes, because we haven't had that privilege of having a mom and dad before. And then God giving us this privilege, you know, we are all like happy. We all feel like now we have a home. And also, if there is any young mother like me, I just want to advise you that you can do it. I was once a nobody that never knew that maybe I can one day build a school or build an orphanage. But you can do it and you can become a greater person if you just put your heart in it. It's a great feeling knowing that you're training future leaders, yeah. future doctors, mm -hmm. future nurses, future farmers. And future entrepreneurs. I can't believe I'm seeing you. <laughs> Me too, I really can't believe it, like, I was you know, so... You know, with, with what you're doing, I was expecting to see somebody huge, you know, because what you're doing is huge. Oh, really? No, you, you have no idea. Do you know how many people have asked me, don't leave Malawi without meeting you? I'm, I'm not sure, but also people texted me that I should text you, that you should meet me. And I tested you. Yeah. And she tested back. So here we are. So much. Does the name mean amazing? It means blessings. Oh, 
to say you are. So, so I'm, I'm going to say this. I, my first son, the name will come from Kenya. Okay. So the first female that I'm going to have, I'll give her the name to say you are from Malawi. That would be great. No, because what you're doing is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I, I want different names of blessings in different languages in Africa. Yeah. So I have one from Kenya. Kenya Maasai. Mm -hmm. God, if you ask me what's the name, I, I don't think I remember. <laughs> what's my Maasai name? Lamayan. Huh? Lamayan. Lamaya. Yeah. It's <laughs> a blessing name. Lamaya. I'm going to name my first son Lamaya. Yeah, Lamayan. I got my first son name from the Maasai people. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Listen, I, I, I wish you can tell me the journey. Mm -hmm. how, how it all started. But I think a lot of people don't know what you do. First of all, let, let's start from there. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, I don't know how best to explain what I do, but I do charity work. I do charity work that empowers young mothers and also give education to children and also give them shelter. Yeah, that's the brief that I can give. You are 23 years old. I'm 24 now. 24? Yeah. You know, we're born on the same day. Really? 9th March. Mm -hmm. So, I was born on 9th March. You, you, hey. you see, I've done a lot of research about you, eh? <laughs> that got, is so great, we, though. We've got the same date of birth. Wow. I'm sorry, my own is, my own is 3rd March, yeah. <laughs> my own is 3rd March. But, you know, <laughs> what you're doing, knowing that we share the same birth month, mm -hmm. I'm more proud of you. Thank you. How did it start? How did it start? Um, so before I started this, this is a, an organization that is called You Are Not Alone, Yana. Mm. So before I started Yana, there was another organization that was called Empowering Young Mothers. And that's where I was empowering the mothers and their babies. Then I found out that there were a lot of street kids, a lot of abandoned babies. And also looking at myself, because I gave birth to a child when I was 16. So I was like, what if I do more of helping children as well? So that's where I was like, okay, I'm going to start an organization that is called You Are Not Alone for everyone when it comes to the elderly, the women, the children, and people with disability. Should I say that whatever you're doing is because of your personal story that inspired you to do what you do? Yeah. First of all, there is my story and also my story of my child that has empowered me and that has motivated me to do whatever I do. Tell me more. You... you... You got pregnant at the age of 16? Yeah, I got pregnant at the age of 16. But before I got pregnant at the age of 16, my mother abandoned me when I was a baby. So growing up without a mother, without a father, it has been very hard. I know there have been people who have tried to give me that love, but you always want to have the mother's love when you know that they are alive. So looking at her abandoning me and her not wanting me, that really hated my, like it hurt my feelings. And it also made me grow up with trauma. So. That's also part of the inspiration that made me to take in abandoned babies and orphans so that I can give them the love that I always wanted. Is your mom still alive? Yeah, she's still alive. Are you guys friends now? I forgive her and I chose to love her from a distance. But I believe that whatever your mom did made who you are today. Yeah, yeah. I, I always tell people, I lost my dad in 2017. And I was so dependent on my dad. Mm -hmm. But the day my dad left, that's when I became a man. Mm -hmm. If my dad was still alive, I might not meet you. Yeah. Because my dad was so strict that you have to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. I completed my engineering degree, but because my dad was not there, I was like, you know what? It's time to take my own Passion. You know, pa yeah. path. Yeah, and path, yeah. here we are today. That's great. I, I, I would love you to use this platform, one day, I would love to see you hugging your mom. Okay. Because, because what, whatever, no, I, I'm serious. Whatever happened, mm -hmm. that gave birth to who you are. What, what has been the pain that you went through when um, mommy, go, mommy abandoned you? Who are you staying with? What were you doing at that moment? Don't cry, we're not gonna cry in this video, please. Because I could okay. see that you just wanna, if you cry, I'm gonna cry too. Please don't cry. Okay, fine. Um, the challenges mostly that I saw was there were people that I used to stay with 
and there are people who really look after me and also but there were people who were hurting me in the process of looking after me you know whereby I don't know what happens but when someone is taking care of another child that is not theirs there is always a difference that is always there you know there were times where they would tell me that oh this is why your mother abandoned you this is why your father ran away from you this is why you are alone this is why you do this you're not going to prosper in this life so looking at those words that have been said to me they used to break me not just from my mom but also from other people around me but like enough i had my grandfather my grandfather has always been there for me since i was born so even even when i got pregnant he was the one who always had my back and he was al always the one who was looking after me and always believing in my dreams and my goals i read about you and what i saw on the internet that you were kicked out of the house that you were staying in yeah because the by moment who? by my uncles yeah so they kicked me out of the house twice the first time it was because I don't, I don't know it was just like oh you like going to church I was that time I used to go to church like from morning up to five o'clock so they say you're going to church maybe you're lying that you're going to church so you have to get out of this house so I got out of the house and I told him that I told them this word that you know what they rejected stone turns to be the cornerstone and they were saying oh you're lewd why would you tell me all that so like things kept going on and on so I had to leave the house and I started staying in this other place that wasn't even nice and we could struggle to eat I could only have to find like I can say one dollar to make sure I provide food for myself and my son so yeah you're so young but I know that time I was around maybe 18 17 and you went through all of that yeah then I, I was kicked again out of the house when I was around I think 20 years because I opened a school that was helping children in the community so they were saying I want to inherit the land so they had to kick me out of the house. Where exactly is that? I mean, was it a, a family member's house or you just go? It was my grandfather's house. So since my grandfather loves me so much, there were other kids. That, uh, he has other kids who love me and also there were other kids of his that didn't love me. Hmm. So they thought maybe once my grandfather has died, I'm going to inherit the place, the land, the house and everything. So they had to close the school. So with, with your grandfather's house, you decided to... You know, establish a school over there? Yeah, before I was kicked out. What led to the school that you established in your grandfather's house? So since I, had a ch I have a child who, is, who has special needs, so every time when I send him to nursery schools, preschools, they used to abuse him because they were not able to know what is wrong with him because people are not aware of autism. So that time we thought he has autism, so he wasn't able to communicate, not able to use the toilet. So I think because of that, that's why the teacher was getting angry and you know maybe you're teaching the child and it seems like they're not making progress so they were abusing the child so that's when i was like you know what i'm just gonna open a school for my son and i'm going to take other children in the community to make sure that they're benefiting from this as well you successfully opened the school for your son how many people were you training that time uh that time i took there were almost 25 kids that we are coming for free. I could provide food, I could provide school uniform. And there's a certain lady in this house that still helps me that we used to work together. So she was the one who was like a teacher to the kids and I was also being a teacher to the kids as well. But you had nothing. You, you had nothing, but you're still, I mean, taking care of other people's kids. Well, yeah. Where were you getting the funds to do that? I was selling samosa. So do you know samosa? So I used to sell samosas, we have freezers, I used to sell, sell freezers. Then I managed to buy this other bike. People here can rent bikes, so mm. I, I bought a bike and that was making money as well, so I would support. So you're using that children. money to take care of the children? Yeah. You got kicked out again? Yeah, I got kicked out again. Your school but was closed also, down? Apart from that being, me being kicked out, also I made a decision for myself. Because my uncle that time, right now he doesn't drink, that time he used to drink. So whenever he's drunk, he could hurt us, me and my child and the other woman, other girl who was there. So my, this other woman once told me that, you know what, Tusa, if you keep on staying at that place, what if, you, what if your uncle kills you? What, who is going to be with your child? So apart from him chasing us away, then I just decided to take a step and go back to the village. So I went to that village and I talked to the chiefs and they gave me a free building to have kids in so a hundred kids came into that school so I started teaching the kids 
then this other woman was helping me monthly with money to pay for my rent and also buy food. And I could use the same money to share with the kids by cooking porridge for them. So these kids came, kept on coming. Then we were like, okay, per kid, everyone will be paying one dollar to make sure that we, we pay the teachers and pay our staff. So then I joined TikTok and that's when people, a lot of people came in to support after they heard, they heard my story. And as I was there in the village, that's when I was like, there's other kids who are still struggling to have a place to sleep. People are still abandoning babies. And that's when I started taking in babies and teen moms. And that's when, you know, the, the family kept growing. How many kids have passed through your hands so far? Uh, like, what do you mean? Like in total kids that you've been taking care of, because I believe that some of them comes and goes. Yeah. All, all of them has to be with you, so. Uh, so we want to, right now we are planning to have the kids until they become independent because there is other organization, uh, there's a law that maybe kids have to go back to their families when they're 18, but there are other kids that don't even have a family. So if we let them get out of the orphanage or the safe, ho safe home, that means they'll go back to the streets. So we just want to make sure that when the kids are leaving the, the, the center, they should be able to be independent or they should have a job or business or something that they can help themselves. So currently, how many kids are under your care? Right now, we have 100 kids. 100 kids? They all live here? No, we have two houses. This is the first one. Do you own the house? No, we are currently renting this house because the house that we were staying in the village became very small. So we decided to come in town and rent a, a place whereby the kids can be safe and they can have like security and water and electricity. So you took the kids out of the village mm -hmm. and brought them to the city? Yeah. Plus they just wanted to experience life in town. So I was like, okay, I'm going to give you that. You're amazing. Thank you. And you pay the rent yourself? I uh, have people who donate through social media, so they help us with rent. But we're moving out because here in Malawi, once people know that you're an organization, they start raising the rent every month. So we were like, maybe we should just have our own place whereby we don't have to deal with rent, water, and maybe electricity. So are you building your own place now? or? Yeah, we're building our own place, so we're going back to the village. You're going back to the village? C can you take me there? I will. I, I really, I really want to see it. Uh, I, you know, when you meet people that are so inspiring, it, it touches your heart. It, it makes you want to even just stop what you're doing and go and do what they do because it's just mind-blowing because you, you, you're so young, you know, and of what you're doing, it's, it's, it's massive. Thank you. Well, what, what really inspires you? I just want to heal and be there for kids that don't have anyone to be there for them. Should, so, like, at, at what age do you pick them up? I take babies, uh, whether they're two days, three days, four days, I, I take them in. Have you had a baby of one day old? I mostly have had, like, three days. Three days? Yeah. They give birth to them and abandon them? Or? They give birth and the mother dies while giving birth to the kids. So, yeah. Do you, do you have people that you work with? Yeah, I have women. I, don't think I really can't. can manage everything by myself. <laughs> How many people are there? Uh, like, we have almost close to 20-something or 30-something women. And you have to pay all of them? Yeah, I have to pay them. But what job do you do apart from this? It's just, this is my job, so that means I have to talk to donors, I have to write proposals, I have to do that to make sure that people eat. I pay people and make sure that the people are happy as well as they're working with me. Great job, guys, say hi. Hi. Um, she's an African doing incredible stuff. And I wish as Africans watching this video will come true for her. Do you have uh, pages that you accept donations and stuff? Yeah, I have I mostly put the link for donation on my Instagram, but I also prefer people who there's other people who wants to make like big donation then they want us to write to them like I'm okay with the rings and 
If you were just donating to my GoFundMe, it's okay as well. Give me GoFundMe page okay. that you you run it yourself. So I'm gonna lead this campaign myself. I always do. Um, from the day we released the video, from the first day to one month, I'm gonna make it happen. I, 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 I don't want to cry, I don't, I'm trying so hard because I feel like what you're doing is, is, is mind-blowing. Thank you so much. And whatever I can do together with them, we're going to make it happen to support the dream. Thank you. you know, they say Africans don't support each other, but uh, I'm telling you guys, we're changing that narrative. The GoFundMe is going to come from here, just like what you did for Salah Torres. The school is already, the school is almost ready. I'm going to go there, take you guys there for you guys to see. But I believe that we can have that impact in Malawi. Let's make it happen. The link is in the description. Second house? Yeah, this is the second house. Also, you own it or it's also rented? Oh, we are currently lending it as well. We've been lending it. I feel like, I feel like you're doing too much, you know? So cool. Renting house to take care of people. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a lot of work and also my advice to other people who want to start the same thing, like it's better to be on your own land and own place because it cuts some cost like when it comes to lentils and all that. But mm. for us, as I told you, that the house where we were staying in the village became very small. So we decided to come in town so that we can lend some space for the kids. So the house in the village is what you own now. You're building, you, exp you expanded it. Uh, no, the house in the village, it was just given to us, of course, that time, but it was still small. But the house, uh, but there's another village where we're building, it's close okay. to that village. Okay, so yeah. you're building a new house right now. Yeah. Which is, which is your own, right? Yeah, which is our own house. Okay. So we are like building a village. So when it comes to, a, when you're building a village, you build schools, you build uh, houses, hostels, school, and you do farming at the same place. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah you guys going to eat what you produce. Yeah. But I feel like the kids in here are older than the ones that in the other. Yeah. You separate them along the journey. Yeah, we did. Okay. You, this one still have been with you for that long? Uh, we just moved in this house like this year. Oh, so they used to stay the, the same in, house? Yeah, they used to stay in the same house. So it was still like not healthy when it comes to mixing babies and other kids. So that's why we just had to separate them. So we have a lot of kids, but some of them, they have gone to the baby's house. Oh, we, okay. passed, we passed them in oh, the road okay. on, when on they the were going, going to the, yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you. And um, they have been with you since? Uh, some here have been like for a year, two years. Oh, okay. Yeah. You picked them from the street too? Yeah. Some in the, in the village that I was staying, that's when they had to come to our house. Hey, Superman, come here. Superman. Ha, here, here, not... Mm, Captain no, this America. is not Captain America, Captain Malawi. <laughs> huh? yeah, but, hey, Captain, what's up? Yeah. You good? That's your son? Yeah, this is my son. He lives here with the kids? Yeah, he does. He lives here with the kids since the beginning, honestly. When we started this whole, all this, like he's been staying with the other kids. But I feel like he's the pioneer of whatever you're doing. <laughs> he's a pioneer of the, he's the leader of this group. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, he's the one who motivated me to do all this. You know, the fact that you never gave up on your kid, and you see your kid right now, how does that make you feel? It feels good. Feels good? Yeah. Captain Malawi, you grow up, you become a captain, and you fly your mom everywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the place? Yeah, this is a place. A new home? Mm -hmm. You mean you did all this? Yeah, and we have done it for like five months. 
We've been building for five months now. Are you so. saving or money that comes from donors and you put all of them together to establish this? Yeah, like all the funding that people have been donating, I've been putting it into building because like, I feel like once we settle on our own place, we're going to be able to do a lot of things up, uh, instead of just lending a can place. I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you have your own home? Do you have your own house? I don't even have. <laughs> I don't even have, like, even people ask me, do you have a personal car? I don't even have, like, I just want to make sure that the kids are okay and they're stable. That's what I need. Bless your heart. Yeah. And what building is that? Uh, that is the secondary school. That is going to be done, like, almost, like, next week. Secondary school? Yeah. Why are you building a secondary school? Because, as you can see where we are, there is no school here. So with the children that I have, they, they won't be able to go to the schools that are very far. So just to make sure that they get the education and they get the, the, the to also like for distance wise, I think they're going to benefit so much on that. And plus, as you can see, this house is huge. So we decided to start with the secondary school so that we can, done, we can get done with it quickly so that we can move in there. Then we can finish the house. So you move in there to stay there? Yeah. While the secondary school is still going on? Yeah and you take time to finish this. Yeah, we have been building this as well. As we were building that, we have been building this. Why are you taking so long to finish it? Uh, because it's huge. So there's a difference. This, that is like a small, uh, a small classroom, of course. It's like, this is, that is entering two times in this. So looking at this, we wanted to take time to make sure that we do it properly because it needs, it will need, uh, I don't even know how best to explain this, but it will need a lot of things than what a classroom can need. Do you have the funds for this already? Yeah, there's the, some people who are funding it through the GoFundMe as well on the, on the uh, social what, media. What is your total amount on the GoFundMe account? Uh, for this? No, I mean like, uh, how much money have you saved, ha have you had mm. so far from the GoFundMe account? Mm, I'm not really sure about that. Yeah, but we had the Go, we've been running the GoFundMe for a year, so the GoFundMe has been able to help us with buying cars that have been used for transportation to bring stuff here. The side we have used it to buy the land, we have used it to feed the kids, pay school fees, and pay the lentils from where we are. Where's the land allo allocated for the clinic? So for the clinic, for the clinic, the land that you are seeing that that has been cleared. That's where we're building a clinic. We're starting next week. Because since, ever since we started building to this, uh, to this land, we have witnessed almost more than five deaths of young children because they haven't been able to go to the hospital because of distance. So some could even die on the road. Some would die at home because the, even the parents are not able to buy maybe Panadol or something like that. I know you need a clinic so badly. Yeah. But as I stand here, I feel like you still need a primary school because when I went to the first school, mm -hmm. I saw so many kids that you had. Yeah. Wow. I wish and I could honestly, a um, I know we are building a lot of stuff, but this is because we, we have come here to a place that looks like there's nothing, like a desert. And when you're looking after children, mm. there's so many things that can happen. A child can die, a child can do, can get very sick. So that's why we ended up like, okay, let's build a uh, clinic, let's build a secondary school, just because we want it to be sustainable. We want it to be a, a place where it can stand on its own. Like if we have images of the kids with diabetes, if we have images of kids with asthma, we should be able to treat them here before it gets worse. If, if I had the power, I would have done a lot. But I feel like there is power from the new media, that is social media. Yeah. I don't know, bring the camera, man. I don't know if I have to go, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I hardly do this, but uh, I have to go on my knees. You know, for you guys to know that I, I am very serious. I, I wish, you know, um, I recently did a story in uh, Uganda. And the impact that I saw is because of the power of you guys, man. But I feel like 
he's so young to carry all this burden. I'm going to Neo as well. Cause... No, 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 you just stand. Let me do this on your behalf. Um, I'm going to Neo as well. So, I, I, I just want to do this. I want to be an ambassador for this young lady. She has not asked me to, but I feel like what she's doing, she needs help or support from you and I. So I am going to do something. I'm not going to tell you guys, but I want you guys to also do something. I'm giving ourselves like three months. I'll be back here. But within that three months, set up a new GoFundMe for me. I'm going to let it come from you, not from me, so that okay. everything will come from your side. And what we're going to do, it's more like making sure there's primary school here, making sure there is uh, a clinic in here, making sure there is even a small playgrounds for the kids to play on. I know that I have the power on the internet. I know that I have people who can even donate a clinic by themselves. Let's make this happen. In three months, let's, in three months, I'll be back here. And I'm going to be back here to celebrate with you guys, man. I, I, I don't think she has to be she has to go through all of that to make sure that kids have education, kids have proper health. Wow. You're an inspiration. Thank you. And I'm going to try all I can to make it happen. I'm your ambassador. That, that is really great, like, honestly. So you can call me any day. Yo, ambassador, what's happening? We're making sure that you get the school, the primary school here. We're making sure you're going to get the, what do you call it? The clinic, small playgrounds, anything to make kids live in a comfortable environment. You and I are going to be part of this history. So don't disappoint me. The link is in the description. Thank you in advance. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 24. You don't, you don't look 24. <laughs> you sound like maybe a 90-year-old woman in a 24-year-old body. <laughs> because the things that, that comes out of your mind, it's like it's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. I will see you soon. Trust me, I'll see you in three months. I'm looking forward to that. So, I will call you if you don't come in three months. <laughs> like, no, you said you'll come in three months. I, I, no, I'll, I'll see you in three And months. I will tell your people that he, he didn't come he in did, three months. I'll see you in three months. <laughs> and when I'm coming back, I'm coming to see the effect or the impact of this baby. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to see you in three months. Amen. <laughs>